Ghanaian writers. And actually, a literary haven in Ghana's capital, Accra. Sylvia Arthur founded the Library of Africa and the African Diaspora in 2017 to celebrate African writers and those in the diaspora. She says although Africa can boast of great writers, their works are not readily accessible and is something that is making the younger generation of readers on the continent lose touch of their literary heritage. It's hugely important that we know that we come from a long line of writers and scholars and intellectuals because otherwise how can we feel empowered to represent ourselves, especially in these times where our whole being is being attacked. The library has a display of books on colonialism, the struggle for independence, African politics, biographies and autobiographies of African leaders. It also features works of fiction by Africans and people of African descent living in the USA, the Caribbean and Europe. And we have a good selection of uh, writers from South Africa as well. Sylvia says her vision for this library has become very important today as issues of colonialism and racial abuse in America attract global attention amid protests by the Black Lives Matter movement. When you're able to read the works of people such as Steve Biko, Nelson Mandela, Winnie Mandela, etc., who have struggled in times that were as hard as they are today, if not worse, it gives you a, a guide almost into how you should uh, navigate the situation that we're in today. The library is stocked with more than 4,000 books. B.C. Ejapon is one of the Ghanaian writers that have their books displayed here. One of the problems that we have as African writers is distribution inside Africa. It's a lot easier to get books from America or from the UK or Ireland or even Portugal than to get books from even um, South Africa because Africans don't trade with one another and that reflects in our books too. And so it's very hard to connect with other writers and to find their books. BC says the collection of books in this library is helping bridge the accessibility gap. Many of the books on these shelves make up Sylvia's personal collection of African writers and those of African descent. She says by showcasing the books, the history of African literature can be preserved. And parents trying to instill the habit of reading in their children will not have to look far to get a variety of books that gives them perspectives on Africa. It gives us a sense of belonging, that we don't have to go outside of our homes, outside of the continent, to look for enlightened writers. We have it right here. And it helps our children to have mentors and people to look up to. They know these writers have lived their lives. There are biographies on them that they can read to know that we have, we have some value on our continent. We have a lot to learn, a lot and a lot to learn. And you realize that the African literature is very, very rich. It's our root. So today I can say that I'm very, very happy. I've discovered something and it's a new, new knowledge for me. Ghana has for many years been promoting itself as a leader in Pan-Africanism, a movement that unites Africans and the African diaspora. Sylvia Arthur hopes this library can strengthen the course and guide Africans to embrace their identity and literary heritage. Nabil Ahmed Rufai, SABC, Accra, Ghana.